Primary progressive aphasia, or PPA, are rare younger onset dementias, characterized by a progressive decline in speech and language skills. Three types of PPA are recognized in the literature and are primarily classified according to the presence or absence of certain speech and language deficits, along with distinct patterns of brain atrophy and neuropathology. These subtypes are known as the logopenic, non-fluent and semantic variant. While the literature is in agreement about the description and separation of these variants, the reality is that clinicians still find it difficult to tease them apart in the clinical setting. So for the past few years, we have been exploring whether tests of cognition can improve the diagnostic accuracy of these variants. This led our team to explore whether the commonly used cognitive screening tool, the Addenbrooke's Cognitive Examination 3, or the ACE 3, is an effective tool at evaluating the cognitive and language profiles of the PPA variants, and ultimately assisting the clinician in arriving at a PPA diagnosis. In phase one, step one of this study, we evaluated the baseline assessment ACE3 scores of 90 PPA patients and 104 control volunteers, and created heat maps to appreciate the patterns of ACE performance scores across PPA groups. Here, group mean scores are represented as percentage scores of the absolute score one could achieve for that subdomain or item. Lighter colors mean better performance and darker colors mean worse performance. So for example, if we look at the ACE3 total scores, we can see that the PPA patient scored between 65 to 71 out of 100, whereas the control scored 95 out of 100 or 95%. And while these findings are interesting, we found that the profiles were more interesting when we look at the performance scores at the item by item level, as performance differences were more striking at the item level than at the ACE3 subdomain level. In phase one, step two of this study, we used the data from phase one, step one, and conducted multinomial regression analyses and built interactive ACE3 PPA variant calculator using the RStudio tool. Here is a brief demonstration of a clinician entering the ACE3 performance scores of a patient suspected to have the logopenic variant. The logopenic versus non-fluent calculator setting has been applied before the clinician switches across to the semantic versus non-semantic variant setting. It's important to note here that this tool should only be used by clinicians experienced in administering the ACE3 and like the design of the ACE3 test, should only be used by clinicians as a screening tool to guide further investigations. Limitations of the calculator's use are discussed in the paper. To verify its accuracy, probability values of the regression model were derived based on a five-fold cross-validation of cases. Then, sensitivity, specificity and precision evaluation metrics were inspected. We explain these metrics in more detail in the paper. In phase two of this study, the calculator's accuracy was then verified in an independent sample of PPA patients who had completed the ACE-R, which is the predecessor of the ACE-3, and had in vivo amyloid PET imaging and or brain autopsy pathological confirmation. How ACE-R scores were converted to ACE-3 scores is explained in supplementary table five. Verification of these patients showed that the calculator correctly classified 77% of the semantic patients, 16% of the non-fluent patients, and 24% of the logopenic patients. Importantly, for patients who were not classified, diagnostic probability values mostly pointed towards the correct clinical diagnosis. Further, misclassified diagnoses were extremely rare, with only one logopenic patient misclassified as a semantic patient. To our knowledge, this is one of the first data-driven interactive clinical tools to differentiate the PPA variants. It demonstrates sound accuracy and is freely available to clinicians. We believe that this calculator represents a new frontier in using data-driven approaches to screening dementia subtypes in the clinical setting. Thanks for watching.